Hey everyone! Welcome back to the Biochemistry SI Program YouTube channel. The series of Exam 3 videos will all be about metabolism. In the last video, we covered glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, which you'll find out has a connection to today's topic on glycogen synthesis and degradation. Let's begin. We will start this process with a molecule of glucose 6-phosphate. I wonder where we get that from. If you remember from last Friday, glucose 6-phosphate comes straight from glycolysis after glucose is phosphorylated into glucose 6-phosphate. You might wonder how it gets there. Once glucose 6-phosphate is formed in glycolysis, it can be diverted into glycogen synthesis when the energy needs of a cell are met and glucose levels are high. This diversion happens in the cytoplasm of a cell where both glycolysis and glycogen synthesis occur. Phosphoglucomutase reversibly rearranges the molecule into glucose 1-phosphate. This is important because glucose 1-phosphate in the next step then feeds into an irreversible step of glycogen synthesis. Firstly, uridine triphosphate, or UTP, combines with glucose 1-phosphate to form UDP glucose and pyrophosphate, or PPI. This is an endergonic reaction, meaning it requires energy. Next, the pyrophosphate produced in the reaction is then hydrolyzed into two inorganic phosphate molecules, usually abbreviated by PI, by the enzyme pyrophosphatase. This is an exergonic reaction, meaning it can release energy. The hydrolysis of the pyrophosphate is a thermodynamically favorable reaction, which means it releases energy to help drive the overall reaction forward despite the initial step being endergonic. The net result is the conversion of glucose 1-phosphate to UDP glucose, which is then ready to be added to a growing glycogen chain by the enzyme glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase forms alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages between glucose molecules, which can create a linear chain. Then, branching enzyme creates a alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage for the branch points in the glycogen molecules. The creation of these branches increases the solubility and availability of glucose in the glycogen molecule, which is crucial for rapid glucose release and energy demands. Now, let's talk about glycogen degradation. Glycogen degradation, also known as glycogenolysis, is the process of breaking down glycogen to release glucose units for energy. This process primarily occurs in the liver and muscle cells. The enzyme glycogen phosphorylase cleaves the alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages of the glycogen polymer, releasing glucose 1-phosphate. Then, the enzyme phosphoglucomutase converts glucose 1-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate can then be shuttled back over to glycolysis when there is a need of energy to be broken down. If the cell needs energy for muscles or the liver, it can be released into the bloodstream straight from glycogen degradation. It's important to think about the big picture. I encourage you to follow along and draw with my videos or teach it to your study friends like I'm teaching it to you to reinforce the memory aids. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next, we will move into the intermembrane space and within the mitochondrial matrix to discuss more metabolic processes. And we'll see you in the next one.